morning. Welcome to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We certainly have a personality with us this morning. As a matter of fact, Mobile has two personalities with us this morning. <laughs> uh, Judith K. Busby was not able to be with us this morning. And uh, I just kind of searched around and reached down the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> 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 and go and behold, when I, I dislodged something to the bottom of the barrel, but floated right to the top. And it's a, a guy we all know and love. <laughs> And the guy we all read uh, every Saturday. And uh, we welcome to Danny Tackett, who's sitting in for Judith Busby. Jen, nice to have you with us, Mr. Tackett. Hey, it's always good to be up here with you, too. Uh, Jim Ash, we go back a long ways together. Well, a boy from Armington, done made good. <laughs> uh, Dan will remember that uh, we always try to start kudo, uh, Charles, with a uh, viewpoint with a kudo or two. Uh, today I'd like to make it at least two of them. Uh, the, uh, the Lincoln College, the Lincoln Community Theater Group, uh, just finished a little run with, uh, with a production called uh, The Man Who Came to Dinner. And it was a big cast, and it was nicely done. Uh, very funny. Did you get did your schedule allow you to see that, Dan? It did not. Uh, I'm sorry that you could reinforce what I'm about to say here. Uh, another co uh, uh, a co host who's appeared in your seat, uh, Tim Searby. Oh, sure. Uh, appeared in a small part, and that small part was the greatest milking scene I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I told Tim, my grandfather was a great, he had a bunch of Holsteins, and he was a great milker, but he couldn't milk like Tim, Tim Sibri milked that scene. <laughs> and, and all in all, it was a, it was a very, very, uh, very enjoyable evening. So congratulations to those folks at the Community Theater. They made a comeback in a, in a very big way and making an impact, and a lot of people enjoyed it. Uh, then we had a granddaughter of uh, Tom and Mary Welch, who's a very talented, very talented violinist. She's not a fiddler, as I affectionately call you. Right, right. <laughs> this young lady uh, is, lives in Montana, and she was here visiting her grandparents. And with her, she brought a noted, uh, uh, a noted violinist. I uh, couldn't begin to pronounce it. Uh, it's a long Chinese name. He's an American citizen, and uh, this young lady is studying uh, under him. And he brought with him uh, uh, another uh, Chinese artist who played the uh, French horn. And uh, then uh, to kind of round out the evening, we had uh, Jack Grau, uh, son of Chris. Uh, and I mean, they just did a great job here. And uh, he did a little number, a hard number to do, from Fiddler on Roof, the Tevia, uh, uh, I Wish I Were a Rich Man. Mm -hmm. And he did an excellent job on that. So uh, it was a great evening. And uh, 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 young, young Miss Welch, uh, if she decides to make this her profession, she's going to go a long way. She's extremely talented. And an 11-year-old youngster up there. And it was kind of fun to watch her. And, and uh, so it was a great evening. Now, we have to get along with the program because we've taken the guy away from his work. And uh, why don't you, you, I didn't ask you this, this blindside you right now. Why don't you introduce our guest, uh, Mr. Tackett? Uh, uh, you happen to know him a little bit. From, I'll be happy to. Yeah, a matter he's, of fact, he's, uh, he's well known uh, all around our community. He is. For doing many good things. Yes, I think. Uh, well, let's introduce you first. Uh, Bill Campbell, co-owner and manager of uh, Lincoln Charlie RGA. Lee. Is or Charlie a, Lee. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It must be the hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're wearing that doggone hat and it's holding your brains in. Right. Anyway, Charlie Lee is with us. Uh, I've known Charlie for a lot of years. A little bit of a business relationship. When I worked at the Courier, you were and still are a great advertiser of the Courier. Uh, but more importantly, and I think everybody who lives in Lincoln has been a benefactor at one time or another of your generosity and great community spirit. And that's why Charlie Lee is with us this morning. Well, thanks that's for why that. Charlie's with us. Appreciate you know, all that. Thank Charlie, you so uh, the IGA store, let's just define that. I didn't know it. I always saw it was the Illinois Growers Association. It had all good thing to do with that. Uh, it's the Illinois Growers Alliance. 
Indep- grocers. Indep- independent. Alliance, yes, independent sir. grocers. Well, stumble around, fumble around, we'll get it right yet. <laughs> um, a, an organization which has stores all over the country, Charles? That's right, all over the country and some overseas also. Mm-hmm. Still services 2,000 stores. Uh, they group together where they group stores together and give them better buying power. And sure. And, and things like that. Well, that's the reason you're with us this morning, uh, because uh, we're all used to the big box stores, so to speak, and it makes it tough for the little guy on the street. Uh, the, the Independent Growers Alliance makes it possible for you folks who are in that to band together and increase your purchasing power from your suppliers, and that's why you can be uh, more competitive on the street against the big box stores. That's right. When you grow that many together, you 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 uh, sign contracts with uh, the produce companies or whatever, and it's we agree to do a certain thing, and it gives us buying powers, makes us uh, puts us on a level playing field with a lot of the big corporate stores. Sure. Yeah. Charles, as I said earlier on, one of the real reasons that I thought it'd be a good thing to have you up here as our guest is. Uh, the Lincoln IGA store had been an integral part of our community in many in many ways. Uh, uh, fundraiser here and fundraiser there, and this and uh, you always find that the IGA uh, group is a sponsor or makes some contribution of some sort. A big, uh, big donor, absolutely. Uh, uh, not the least of which are your uh, cookouts that you have there on the parking lot. Uh, for many organizations, take advantage of that. Uh, he has to move things around. Somebody has to move that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, the cookhouse out there, for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of work goes on with that. Sure does. Uh, to date, uh, we can track uh, over the last 30 years. We and we've raised or helped raise over a million dollars for schools, organizations, churches, all the all the above. So uh, it seems like in schools, especially when the funding cuts, the parents are asked to do much more. Sure. So that's been a good uh, outlet for them from mm-hmm. car washes to cookouts to supplying their events wherever they might be. So right. I know my, uh, my sister, Becky Rich, I, I don't know if you sure. know her personally, yeah. but uh, she was heavily involved in uh, PTA events up in Hartsburg, Emden. And she sang your praises to me many times about uh, you furnishing uh, food and supplies at a, just an unbelievable uh, cut rate price. Sure. You know. Well, Charlie has a, a, a deep inventory of bats because he's always picking up a bat and swinging some for some cause <laughs> exactly. in the community. Uh, running a running a, a grocery store today has to be a yeah, that's that's a time to that's time consuming. Uh, Charlie's got to be one of the first ones there and one of the last to leave. And, and, and if he's going to keep his eye on the cork, which is what he does. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the big things that I th- note that you you have there is your uh, um, uh, services for takeout services. Uh, um, that, that, that is that a big part of your of your operation? Sure, the 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 deli and that type. Yes, of thing. Yes, your deli. That's the word yeah, I was searching. Yeah, the for. deli and it's uh, growing, growing all the time, being more percentage of your business. I hate to say it, but funerals are keeps us busy all through the week. Yeah, well, yeah, for yeah. Funeral dinners. Well, that's that's just the way just, it is. Uh, yeah. You know, we 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 service a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of events. I think today we're on our way to a retirement party at uh, Eaton Corporation to feed 100 people, I believe. Wow! Um, and it's just on and on. We we we're real fortunate. We have a big percentage of that business going in, in town. We 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 get a lot. We make it easy. We make yes. fundraisers easy. Yes, and, you and, do. And, 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 and so. you've got nice personnel behind those counters. Uh, very very personable. Uh, very helpful, and uh, they'll suggest here and there, and, and uh, so they make it easy for somebody to step up from and uh, me if I don't know what I'm doing there, and which is usually, uh, they'll help. 
you know, we're real fortunate there. We've got a fine, fine staff. You can't do nothing without a good staff. And we've had people that's long term been with us and stuck with us and work and enjoys their work and you can tell it. So we've been real fortunate with that. And then, you know, we treat them good and boy, they treat us good too. So. There's the important part, uh, as you know, you know your employees are important to they treat them well. That's right. But you see the same smiling faces when you go in there, and uh, and they're always very helpful. Uh, or so and so, I don't I don't shop very much. As a matter of fact, we've almost given up eating here in the last <laughs> last few years. <laughs> so, but so you when know, I go in fun. there and I'm looking for something, and they're there. Yes, sir. You know, it's funny that uh, even the, the young people we got are, are, they always say, knock young people. We, we've had good luck with young people. I mean, very good, but some of them, I, I've known I've been there a long time when I've, I've employed the grandmother, the mother, <laughs> and now their child, the, the grandchild. So, and we got some of them scenarios where over the years, we've we've employed all three or grandson or wow. something. So I, mm. I, I scratch my head and think when one more generation is going to be too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, we've been there a long time. We, we've yes, you have. How long? How long have you been here? Thirty. Thirty years anyway. Wow. Yeah, thirty years anyway. Wow. Now, so, now you started out in the in the building you're in now. Uh, well. Um, or yes, and then. Um, Bill Campbell, we become partners, and uh, he was in the store across the street. Okay. Oh. Merged the stores back 30 some years ago. Oh, uh, that used to be one of Super Value? Yeah, or? Super yeah. Value. It started out as the OANP. And, right. And oh. from, uh, yep, yep, that's right. And went through many changes, and then we, we merged and, and went together and made the Lincoln IGA. All right. Yep. Well, it's worked out very well for the community. Uh, it's got ours. Uh, I ran a, a business uh, for over 50 years, and I know that uh, it takes it takes a lot of on hand. Uh, you, you can't be a, you can't go out and play golf all the time, or, right. or, or uh, run down to the uh, at the corner store and uh, play cards in, in exactly. the back of the tavern. It, it takes it takes a lot of uh, a lot of personal time. Charles, how many employees do you now have at the Lincoln store? Uh, Forty-five, I believe. My. Yeah. Now you mentioned the Lincoln store. That's that's a, another thing. Maybe people aren't aware of. You also have the Mason City. We store. sure do. We've got fifteen to eighteen employees there, also. And you know, in a small community, that's got to be a godsend to have a, a grocery store available to them. Uh, obviously, it prevents them from uh, going to Springfield or Lincoln, which is a pretty decent drive to get a gallon of milk. It is. Yeah. In Mason City. We, we went to Mason City eight years ago, I believe. Has it worked out well for you? It, it's worked out. It's worked out well. It's worked out well. It's, uh, it, you know, the, the business is an independent anything. Oh. It's changed, and you have to change with it. Right. You know, which we work on every day. It's just work on being competitive, mm -hmm. and and there, such as this, we we're able to advertise the stores together, to cut some expense. Sure. We're able to float some people to where you wouldn't have to, mm -hmm. the staff that you, you would. So there's a lot of pluses to it. I call Mason City a a big little town. Yeah, if it you is. Look around, because there's mm -hmm. twenty. 700 people there right and it's 20 miles from any market so it, it's kind of unique where you'd have the Atlanta have the Mount Pulaski where they're small communities and they're closer people always wonder why there's no store there well there's no store there because you didn't support it when it was there right <laughs> but exactly that but that's simple. what that's why it's not there yeah. and it, it's uh, and you know they they all want a grocery store and that that's great, and I think they should have one. But them days of small town stores are probably over. You it know, when you like take it. any anything under two thousand people, it's going to be a Dollar General, Casey's, or well, exactly. it's already. You know, yeah. it, it's just a fact of life. I know a little bit, of very uh, uh, just a, a smidgen about the grocery business, uh, Fiddler. Because when I was a kid, I worked for uh, Her Herb Alexander, oh, right. Alexander's Grocery Store. Mm -hmm. They're on Broadway. I was a high school kid, and uh, uh, Mrs. Tackett would call in at eight o'clock in the morning, and I want number so and so and so and so and so. And you write it all down the pad. Then uh, when you get done with all those calls, you go to the shelves and put them in a box, 
and uh, take them out and you deliver them in the afternoon. And uh, hopefully Herb got paid. <laughs> I just, you know, I stopped and think, uh, he must have taken an awful hit on some of those. Uh, I don't know what he had to swallow, but it had to be quite a bit over the period of time. Well, I think back then, people were more responsible, maybe. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know how to put it, but yeah. yeah. And, you know, delivery becoming a bigger part of the grocery mm -hmm. business. Oh, yeah. You notice the big chains are exactly. starting to deliver. I wanted to mention that to you, but yeah. you, you mentioned they used that word responsible. But we have a responsibility here in this station. We have a responsibility to our uh, to our advertisers, and so we're going to take a few minutes' time and honor them right now. Go ahead, Mr. Ash. And right back live in the studios here this morning, Mr. James Ash says that we have a phone call, and uh, we'll just right, as soon as I put this headset on, go right ahead, caller. Yes, yeah, good morning. Just want to give uh, Charlie a plug here. Uh, he created events for us about three times a year for more years, and I want to count, and they always came off without an issue. He always, uh, I hated dealing with food. Just said how many people you plan to have. Okay, come by and pick it up. We'll be ready to go. And I just want to let him know that we appreciate that, and, and we hope everybody in Logan County supports uh, Lincoln and Mason City IGA. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate, I know Charles Lee appreciates that very much. Uh, go ahead, Charles. Yes, sir. I appreciate that very much. It's, it's always nice to hear. Who is this calling? Uh, this is Bob. Okay, Bob. Well, thank you for the call. I appreciate As it. As in PM Communications, Bob. Okay. All right, Bob. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very yeah, much. You know me. All right. Thank you. Thank right. you very much, sir. Well, there you are. You see? Uh, people people appreciate what uh, Charles Lee's IGA does. Uh, uh, a feature that might be able people think about, and I know it's a great asset to people who are not mobile uh, anymore and as far as uh, transportation is concerned. Uh, you do a delivery service for o older people, I presume, We do. We do part. a free delivery service. Uh, right now we take the orders on Wednesday and deliver on Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're going to start taking orders also on Monday and delivering on Tuesday. It's, uh, you know, you call the order in, we, and next day we deliver it to you. We, we call you with a total. Uh, the service is completely free. Um, we got a young lady and her daughter that's doing a fantastic job. Real friendly, real, real helpful. A lot of folks, uh, you know, uh, like to stay in their home as long as they can. And, and this is one yeah. asset set that, that uh, if they didn't have, I, I think a lot of them would have trouble. Uh, we have uh, several that's their families, their children live out of town. Sure. And and mom or dad's mostly moms left back here in her home where she wants to be. So I, I think we we make it easier for them. Right. You know where they're they're. Oh, you their, don't their you don't think so? You will, that's remarkably yeah. uh, uh, that's a remarkable uh, asset to people who. who Minute. Well, I'll just say uh, maybe they've lost their car, maybe they've lost their driving privileges, or maybe it's a health matter. Uh, the, the the knowledge that they're going to be able to count on that service has got to be a great asset to them uh, in their daily lives. Yes, it is, and and you know when years ago I did all the delivering, my a lot of it myself, and you could tell you was the only person that person saw that day. So yeah. uh, I, I think. Uh, you know the interaction with well, them social and, aspect of and that the older well. I got the more I enjoyed elderly people sure uh, yeah. and when you're younger you don't pay much attention but the older you get you 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 enjoy their their conversation what they know right yeah I experienced that when I mean, uh, got too old to do it now but I, uh, Johnny Gazzardo and, uh, and Nick uh, delivering those uh, meals that they do at Thanksgiving and so mm -hmm. forth and two or three, four times I experienced the fact that they didn't want me to leave right away. Just a few minutes conversation. And it occurred to me, uh, you know, they're here all alone all the time. And that's it. So there's another social outlet for your customers. Not only are they getting their groceries delivered at a very, very fair price, but they're having a chance to interact with people that they don't see. So that's true. And the, the young gal we got doing, I mean, she'll... She takes out garbage for him. She, I mean, yeah. she, she's a personable person that enjoys enjoys what she's she's doing. Enjoys sure. older folks and, and that. So it works out great. 
Well, if I ever get to be old, maybe I'll have to call him that service. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> problems. You don't open your door without problems. Is there one? Is there one big problem that that, that you, you know, face the, daily, Charles? Sure. The independent uh, person in any kind of business is uh, has trouble competing with the oh yeah the corporations that's taken over the world. Yes. Uh, you know, expenses is is your your biggest your biggest issues. Uh, utilities have just gone crazy. Doubled. Uh, doubled in the last three years for us wow them expenses are hard to uh hard to obtain and hard to uh to bleed into your prices it's about uh, you know you want to be competitive so and expenses on insurance and things like that mm -hmm. that's the big issues is is holding your your overhead down so and then there are issues that we tackle every day we do power saving we're we're doing some new lighting and things for power savings in each yeah. stores and and so you just kind of bite them off a piece at a time sure well it's a daily challenge to control inventory and and stock and have uh, in case of produce fresh stuff out there and uh, uh that's just got to be an, an, a never-ending uh, it, it challenge is, for but, you uh, Years ago, we I remember I worked for Eisner's as a young man and was got my training and we had a call board where you'd call and you'd on the phone and read off what you need uh -oh. and you get it two days later and and like now now we're we're got the capability of ordering by noon one day it'll show up at the door and by eight the next about ninety eight percent right so so things have. Technology has helped that tremendously. Oh, I'm sure. We we deal with a big wholesaler that uh, supplies over 2,000 stores out of their location in Champaign, and, and that so that's been it's cut uh, a lot of problems. They they cut a lot of your inventory problems out mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're right there three times a week. So like I say, from by noon one day, eight o'clock in the morning the next. Mm -hmm. We couldn't ask for any better. It's pretty amazing. It'd be 98% right in that time period that they you send it. They'll show up with a thousand pieces on their truck and just what you ordered. So mm -hmm. it's that's pretty neat anymore. You know, a side issue that's free to anybody if you're moving need some boxes <laughs> they've got the day that they set aside you can come to the back door and pick up boxes right. well now listen you can kind of laugh at that and so forth that for, there's a lot of people that are on the move unfortunately so it's quite a service yeah that's right and we people will call and we'll set them out the back door and they'll whip down the alley and get them and and yeah if you need them you need them <laughs> you know? sure so a uh, service that the uh, Lincoln IGA has that is uh, uh, well known and talked about, by the way, uh, Charles Meat Counter. Uh, you do a great job in, in serving your customers with various cuts and so forth. Uh, they appreciate that. And yes, uh, that's, that, that's a good leader for you. It is. It's uh, the, the perishables are seem to be what we're, we're striving towards. Uh, that's where we can compete. Because uh, we cut all our own meat. We're chiver. You know the the our competition does not I exactly mean, we mm -hmm. cut it right there on mm -hmm. on on the store grounds we process it daily we keep it fresh mm -hmm. we use only good choice meat and that makes a difference uh you gotta you know a value of something's only a value if it's good exactly so we're real fortunate got a really good fresh meat business and we we service all the independent restaurants, uh, mm -hmm. all the independent taverns. It's do we we're real mm -hmm. fortunate we have a business like that. We we service the uh, prison some, uh, the jail. Uh, we we feed the inmates on Saturday. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, all the all the above. We do a big business for Lincoln College. So we're fortunate to have that fresh meat and mm -hmm. and something sure. they can't can't well they can but it's not easily to get somewhere else so that's where it's going to be our our thrive towards a future is perishables perishables right because that's what you're seeing our competitors do, do less of right so now your source for me is uh, how 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 far is it away well uh you know uh iowa's raises great beef such as Illinois. Oh, i see mo most of the beef we're rolling in is coming from iowa 
and, and like I say, it seems to be consistent with price and quality. Right. And and, and that. So, um, and the pork. I mean, there's a there's a lot of local Illinois pork too. Also, that we're rolling in. So, I was just thinking the the, the perishables that you mentioned. Uh, stuff like bananas and grapes and the, the things that you normally think of as, as yeah, they can't stay out there very long. No, but you got to think of the price of banana comes halfway around the world, <laughs> and you can still buy it for sixty cents a pound. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. I oh, mean, yeah. And so yeah. and things like that, and it's and, and produce you, and especially. You, wonder, you ask about, yourself, how do they get those bananas here looking so good? Well, they come in, they cut them so green, and there's right. ripening houses that they try to put them to different stages to get them to the store so they're just right yellow, you sure. know, for, for, for consumption. So I have a great banana story. Uh, years ago when I was a kid, uh, Kramer's had a grocery store here in town uh, on the alley. No, no, it was Daner's grocery store on the, on the corner. And they had the stock of bananas come in, and the guy was working with him. And had a poisonous snake in there. <laughs> scared, scared the heat out of everybody. Of course, obviously. But uh, how, how often would that happen? Well, I've seen big spiders years ago. We don't see it much anymore. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we, we used to see some unusual things coming. Out of <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've been around Lincoln too long, I guess. Oh, a long time, know. anyway. And I've seen, you know. Pennies, Kreskies, Woolworths, big corporate owned stores go, you know, they've been here for years and years and all of a sudden we don't have those anymore. And then I see new business ventures open up and sadly and unfortunately most of those are lucky to last five years and they're closed up. They open with a lot of fanfare, but uh, they just can't seem to make it. Granted, you have a, a commodity that everybody needs, food, but you also have something else. What, what's your strength? What keeps you going? Well, I, I think our location is a big part of our strength. Uh, we're, we're the only store in the downtown area. Right. If you yeah. look, we're, yeah. we're where most people live, you know, that's is, true. is where we're at. So yeah. that's that's a big thing. And I, I think our, you know, our customer service, our, our, our competitive prices, our perishable department where we work at it every day. And what you brought up, you see places like Bergner's and Sears and things like that. That's just a... It's uh, things are happening. I mean, uh, and changing, uh, correction, whatever. Sure. But who would who do you think you'd see Sears and Roebuck? Oh uh, yeah. That when I was a kid, that was the store. I sure. Mean, you know, that's where you went for everything. So, things are changing. The internet's changing things. Right. You know, and and uh, correction. Including whatever. even even grocery oh, shopping, grocery, I guess. Grocery, right? Yes, definitely. That's, yeah. That's you know you can. Well, you got to consider the local IGA store as a small potatoes thing in this great huge scheme of grocery buying. Uh, everywhere you look, there's a big, you know, box store, so to speak, and you know their buying power has is, is, uh, got to be uh, a lot better than, and that's why the IGA group started probably whenever many, many, many years back, uh, a long time, so that they could collectively take a nibble at that buying power and have a better buy it stuff at better prices so they could make it more competitive uh, is there any one thing Charles that that that, that, that you carry um, you must carry a lot of things that are lost leaders so to speak well there is uh, and like we say you talk about value we carry varieties that the big stores won't carry also mm -hmm, I mean that's mm -hmm. uh, some of the big corporations if they're not selling so many they, they don't. They don't order them anymore. So we got uh, our regular warehouse we deal with, and we have a specialty food warehouse mm -hmm. that has thousands of items that you you've never heard of. I mean, that's uh, unusual. That uh, what happens? A lot of these cooking shows will come out and they'll have <laughs> something on it. Well, you see that on that cooking show. 
You want to go buy one? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, I think that a competitive edge is that is we'll, we'll pick that item up. We'll mm -hmm. carry that item. Mm -hmm. Where if you go to our competitors, they will not. Sure. They will not. So, so uh, I think that, and I, I think the, 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 like I say, the value of something's, you know, if it's a dollar and it's no good. You know, it's or if it's a dollar and a half and it's something you like. Well, if you yeah. got a lost leader like that, so you know you're not going to make any money on it. You'll hopefully pick up a gallon of ice cream on the way out the door anyway. So. <laughs> that's a, that's the idea, you know. When I was a young man, I worked for Eisner's, and we'd go to these seminars, and they'd always try to teach us to get fifty cents more a customer. Really? Just fifty cents more. You know, that was and a what a difference that would make. I mean, so oh, that, sure. that means to merchandise your store better, have the the items that people want at the time, the seasonal items, uh, things like that, because they're they're the traffic's in there, you, and they're going to buy it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Get them while they're there, you know, and and so we we go on that premise and and try to get it. It's a dollar now. <laughs> yeah, all <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Well, I was going to say I'll just I'll just show an extra fifty cents on the counter, yeah. but I get on order that I do that now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. But uh, that's that's the premise, and and like I say, it's nothing new, but it's the old rules still apply. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'll ask you this: as a seasoned businessman, a, a seasoned successful mm -hmm. businessman, the new business ventures that I, I mentioned in in my question that just don't seem to cut it; they only last. Well, so long. I, I've seen a lot of that, and, and I, I got to be careful because sometimes I see somebody open something and I think, ah, that won't work. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, most business that fail are underfinanced in the first place. Okay. It seems to be the, the sure. if you mm -hmm. see that four or five year, yeah. that seems because you have that grace period, you're open, everything's great. Right. You know, and, and things, you're, you're, whatever you're selling, whatever there there's in you know, the market for, then you get into that period where it's just everyday business. And that seems to be what gets people. Okay. You know, that the, the peak, and then when it goes down to your level. Yeah. And, well. and like I say, you, you, it's all the individual. Oh, you know, sure. people that's willing to change with the times. Right. And, and you know, some things happen out of people's, uh, out of their, their well, uh, out of what they can do anything about. The sure. Interdesk business has been such a, a growing factor within Amazon and everybody oh, yeah. else. I mean, I, I, I think we talk about TVs and, and things like that. I mean, that you wouldn't think about buying on the internet years ago. Right. Are those staples like that? Uh, are they becoming a, 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 a big part of, of online buying? Oh, and it, yes, yes, we're seeing it every day. Is and that I, right? I think, uh, and, and what I always thought, I read a lot of magazines and trade magazines, and what happens out in the coast comes to us. Uh -huh. We're we're a few years behind. Kind of like inflation and yep, recession, that's you right. know. That's right. And so what you'll see, what you're seeing happen out there is the younger people were. They this is their their telephone. They can buy anything they want, and they are. And you're seeing it coming closer and closer to us. So that's where you're seeing the growth. People, you know, positioning themselves mm -hmm. where they'll be ready. You know, and uh, whatever I thought about the internet, but what the internet does too for young people that's looking to get in business it levels the playing field. Mm -hmm. If I'm Joe's Garage Stores, they don't know if I'm a million dollar corporation or a, I'm working out of my garage. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. So, yeah. so it somewhat levels the playing field for new business and right. I, I think that's where you're going to see new business come it is is through the internet and things like that. So it's just not to us yet. And, and like I say, somebody will, will buy something and don't care about sending it back. They'll do it on their phone where I, I wouldn't even know where to start. Or right. People our age. So... Well, in Charlie's case, in the case, in, in, in the case of sales, all sales, it's like the music man said eons ago. You got to know the territory, right? And that's that's exactly the case. Uh, uh, that's you right. you've got to know your your customer base, and uh, that's why you adjust the things from time to time to make more be more accommodating, such as this delivery, that's and right. you plan to in, increase that service. Well. Again, I have to say, at the point of repetition, uh, that's got to be a huge asset to older people. Sure it is. Yes, it is. 
I'll be sure and tell my wife that someday when we run out of gas. When you guys get old. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, kudos to you for being being shrewd businessman up there by realizing, hey, you know, we can provide this service that not only helps our customers, it's helping us. That's right. And it's got, everybody's got to win. Yeah. You know, that no matter what, at the end of the day, you got to make enough money to pay your bills. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, as I alluded to this fact earlier, uh, people talk about your uh, your excellence in your meat department and, and how your people know what the heck they're doing. And uh, that's a major staple. And uh, if you get them in there, uh, buy some meat, maybe you get another buck out of them for some... Dollar more. <laughs> dollar, right. dollar more, yeah. Dollar more. Maybe that's they need right. more Kleenex or something that's right. like that. Dollar more. That's uh, right. That's an interesting thing. The, um, the, the, the turnover... And employees has not has that not made a problem with you because you uh, and we see the same smiling faces in there, and the same people will ask if they can be of any help. So you don't have much of a turnover. No, our core staff we don't. We have the you have to have high some. school and college kids that sure. come and go, and and we see a lot of that we, from the Christian college to high school, and they're you know they're a rotating group, but our core. We've been real fortunate. The core employees have been with us a long time. Oh, I think that says a lot yeah. for you guys. Well, you know. it's it makes it it makes it work. You know, company loyalty and the company's loyalty to its employees. It all works together. That's right. But unfortunately, that's a, that's another disappearing part of, of the America we grew up in. I well, I think somewhat. I, I think that. You'll find that uh, the more loyal your company is, the more loyal you are to them. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the corporate could learn something about that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, interesting thing. Uh, each store has a little extra little specialty that they may feature from time to time. And I remember when I was a kid working with the Alexanders, uh, you walked in the front door on the right, had a, a display case of pipes. Smoking pipes, oh. <laughs> not not PVC pipes. Right. Smoking pipe, and the, the big the big word there was a K Woody. K Woody pipes were a big deal then, and Herb knew all. He was very versed in them. And he knew all about them, but that was a, a little feature that he had in that in that little store there on Broadway. Uh, I bet you he was passionate about it. I bet he smoked a pipe, didn't he? Yes, in fact. <laughs> That's right. In fact. That's right. I think the little tiny Armington IGA store where I worked in high school even sold that brand of pipes. Well, I don't doubt that. They, yeah. they were kind of ubiquitous. And, and at a grocery store, you'd almost, a small grocery store. They, of course, we didn't have any big ones. What was a happy hour in the old days? Was that a combine happy hour stores? I, think I don't recall right that one. Uh, Happy hour. Yeah. Well, you're too doggone young. Yeah, there was there was grab it here. It was, it was a chain that was around and and some of them. And I had a friend of mine, fraternity brother of mine, over at Champagne that ran an IGA store in uh, Farmer City. Mm -hmm. All right. And yes. uh, Jess Hammer and. Uh, I was going to the veterans clinic over in uh, Danville one day, and I decided to go that way. And I stopped in his grocery store, and he was standing there working at the shelves. And I asked him for a box of cereal. He about dropped everything he had. But he hadn't seen him in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> but he had an IGA store over there in in, uh, in uh, Farmer City. All right. Now, Fiddler. Yes. When you were a kid in Armington, you had a grocery store. Yes. And they sold penny candies. Yes. And, and the probably, stock, probably, stock an open, probably open stock, not even not even wrapped. Exactly, and it made it very easy for the stock boys when we walk by to snatch a piece of sure. it. <laughs> yeah, I heard about your reputation up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, uh, as you look ahead, you're making these plans to increase delivery services. Do you have any uh, other plans on the, that you care to discuss with us this well, morning? Well, we're going to do a. a a small remodel in the upcoming year mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of we're going to put like i say they have some energy saving stuff in but we're, we're we're working on that but all that requires investment it sure does you know there's I mean, a lot of programs that you can get help now with with your from Amron and different companies that will help you oh i'm sure to, mm -hmm. but yeah mm -hmm. it all takes investment it sure does any other challenges that you see on the on the? Uh, on I, the I think that the challenges stay the same. I mean, mm -hmm. raising you know your your expenses going up, and I think that'll continue. Mm -hmm. I think becoming more efficient. I remember 
when I worked for the newspaper and covered City Hall. And that had to be fun. I think it still probably would be, but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, I remember when the Walmart Supercenter was proposed, officially proposed, then the paperwork and everything, and how concerned you were, and rightly so, I think. Mm -hmm. But maybe not, because I think you've survived and survived that little episode very well. Well, I, I guess we have a, a lot of, if you look downtown, and a lot of, a lot of people have it. No. Yeah. No, when, when I come to town 30 some years ago, I remember we had two shoe stores. Oh gosh, yeah. Woolworths. We had J.C. Penney's, oh. and I, I guess everything changes. I and and that, but I. I still like the old days. <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> well, and why not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the one of the shoe store slogans. If you, this, you, you know about this one, Dan Tackett. We fit feet to keep feet fit. Yes. Whose was that? Was that Shane? Al Shane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charles Lee, we appreciate your fact that you've taken time out of your busy day. Uh, running the IGA store here uh, is uh, is certainly not a full-time job. It's a 24-7 job. Now, that's about Sometimes, as full as you can yes, get. So you, you shared uh, some of your uh, uh, trials and tribulations, some of your successes. We sure do appreciate you taking your time. I know you've got to get back to your deli counter and so forth to make sure that things are flying. So uh, we always try to come up with a quote from somewhere, and I don't know how apropos this is. I can see, <laughs> see if I can read my own writing this morning here. Oh, uh, yes. Just don't ask uh, me to read yeah. it for you, Bill. Small business ownership is the backbone of American innovation. But to be successful, you first have to have the courage to go for it. Charlie Lee has gone for it and is still going for it. Thank you very still much, Charles. Still going strong. Thank you guys very much. Good.